Recently, I put out a couple videos documenting the dangers of Hollywood and spiritualism. One on Jim Carrey and another on Oprah Winfrey, which are both available on my YouTube channel. The purpose of these videos has been to show clearly and without doubt that many actors and actresses in Hollywood are admittedly opening their minds up and allowing spirits to enter into them. Many believe that they are allowing dead people to come into them so that they can do these amazing performances. But the Bible has clearly told us that the dead know not anything. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5. And so as has been previously documented, even out of their own mouths, they have been telling us that a spirit is guiding and inhabiting their bodies when they are doing these performances. The Bible says that Babylon is a habitation of devils and these spirits of devils are seeking to inhabit many in the movie industry. But some have believed them to be just dead people. Did you channel any of his characters uh, as you played Oscar Grant? Uh, nah, no, I'm, um, Oscar's his own thing. You know, I prayed a lot to Oscar during this. I prayed a lot to Oscar during this. You know, I asked for his guidance to be around me, like shooting this film. So I mean, I, I can't, I can't give any, give any credit to anybody but Oscar. And, and um, you know, I would, I would pray to him. You know, I would, I would channel his energy. I would just ask to be around. Th there was a, a particularly profound moment where I went to. Um, Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is where Desmond eventually retired and passed away. And I went onto his old property um, and went into his, his old wood, wood, woodshed and handled his tools and walked around the lake that he would walk around. And it was, <laughs> I spent a day there just kind of praying <laughs> and, and, and asking, like, just guide me through this. If you can hear me tell, like, tell me, tell me what to do. Tell me how to move. Tell me how to speak. Tell me how to behave, and I'll do whatever you say. So that, that there was some, there, there was a, a, a strange, mysterious spirituality going on around the the making of this film. Desmond Doss, a Seventh Day Adventist, served as a combat medic with an infantry company in World War II, but further distinguished himself in the Battle of Okinawa by saving 75 men and becoming the only conscientious objector to receive the Medal of Honor for his actions during the Second World War. His life has been the subject of books and also a documentary called The Conscientious Objector and recently the subject of the critically acclaimed movie about his heroics called Hacksaw Ridge. Desmond Doss has been dead since 2005 and knows not anything. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 5 of the Bible, so it is not possible for Desmond to inhabit anyone. Hacksaw Ridge was directed by Mel Gibson, a professed Catholic who needs our prayers. He is also the director of the highly acclaimed film Passion of the Christ, probably the most publicized movie of Christ of all time. The actor who portrayed Desmond Doss in the movie Hacksaw Ridge was Andrew Garfield who also starred in the Amazing Spider-Man movie. Another recent movie that Andrew Garfield starred in is a movie called Silence, which is a movie where Andrew portrayed a Jesuit priest. These two Jesuits, the, the you and Adam Driver, play these two Jesuits who are deeply tested, mm. uh, their faith is deeply tested, because they're captured by the Japanese who are trying to rid uh, Japan of, of Christians at the time. So, did you, you have Jesuit to study, like, did you study to be a Jesuit? I studied with a, a mutual friend of ours. I studied with a, a mutual friend of ours, Father James Martin, who sure. used to... Yeah, he was the chaplain of the Colbert Nation. Yeah, uh, yeah, and someone that I love as dearly as you seem to. And, he, um, I studied with him for a year, and I went through the um, Ignatian spiritual exercises. Why did Andrew Garfield study with Father Martin for a year? It is what is called method acting. An actor, and actually I found out that Stanislavski, who invented modern acting, the method of modern acting that resulted in the American method and everything after that, was deeply inspired by St. Ignatius's spiritual exercises, so I felt kind of right at home. Many actors have went through these types of processes, and we will examine it as we continue. But it all comes from Jesuit theater, and as Aleister Crowley said, acting is the fastest way to become inhabited by a demon. The Order of the Jesuits was created at the time when the Protestant Reformation was shaping out. While Martin Luther was protesting evils of Catholicism, there was another man named Ignatius Loyola who established the Jesuit order, also known as the Society of Jesus. Both of them were monks, the difference being that Loyola, instead of confessing his sins and forsaking them, suppressed them to the point where the voice of conscience and the voice of God was no longer heard in the soul. Jesuit common practice is to close the mind to the voice of conscience. Samuel Morse, who invented the telegraph and Morse code, and was also a close friend of Abraham Lincoln, said, And do Americans need to be told what Jesuits are? If any are ignorant, let them inform themselves of their history without delay. No time is to be lost. A sort of Masonic order 
With super added features of revolting odiousness and a thousand times more dangerous, they are about in all your society. They can assume any character that of angels of light or ministers of darkness to accomplish their one great end, the service upon which they are sent. Whatever that service may be, bound to no family, community or country by the ordinary ties which bind men and sold for life to the cause of the Roman Pontiff. Abraham Lincoln, regarding the American Civil War of 1861-65 said, the war would never have been possible without the sinister influence of the Jesuits. We learn from J.E. Shepard, a Canadian historian. Between 1555 and 1931, the Society of Jesus was expelled from at least 83 countries, city-states and cities for engaging in political intrigue and subversion plots against the welfare of the state, according to the records of a Jesuit priest of repute, Thomas J. Campbell. Practically every instance of expulsion was for political intrigue, political infiltration, political subversion, and inciting to political insurrection. John Adams, the second president of the United States, said it this way, My history of the Jesuits is not eloquently written, but it is supported by unquestionable authorities and is very particular and very horrible. Their restoration in 1814 by Pope Pius VII is indeed a step toward darkness, cruelty, despotism, and death. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits. If ever there was a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell, it is the Society of Ignatius de Loyola. So, did you have to study, like, did you study to be a Jesuit? He, um, I studied with him for a year, and I went through the um, Ignatian spiritual exercises. The Jesuits have been known as the most cruel and powerful of all backers of popery, cut off from earthly ties and human interests, their reason and conscience wholly silenced. What is their inspiration? Satan and the practice of emptying oneself and allowing a spirit to inhabit and use them is the origin of method acting. What today is known as contemplative prayer in spiritual formation or spiritual exercises, emptying oneself, some might call it, is all done in an effort to receive spiritual power from on high. Has anyone fasted? Has anyone gone through like a fast or, yeah. And it's a beautiful spiritual process because the idea is you empty out in order for spirit to enter. Mm -hmm. As I discussed in previous videos concerning Jim Carrey and Oprah Winfrey, the spiritual exercises being practiced involve emptying oneself. This is what is done in order for a demon to inhabit someone. However, when one shuts their mind to the Word of God, it is not the Spirit of God, but the Spirit of the devil that comes into them. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 8, and when they shall say to you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead, to the law, and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. It is not the Spirit of God. In fact, the testimony of Andrew Garfield is that it is the Spirit of the devil himself. You did, you did a week of... of, of uh, uh Silence, right? Silent retreat. Yeah, my, myself and Adam together. We, we didn't really know each other very well at that point, and he, he kind of arrived two days after me, and we kind of just waved to each other. And Dude, what's the first thing you said to each other when you could first, when like after a week, right. when you, we haven't been able to talk and you haven't really met before? What's yeah. the first thing you said to each other after a week of silence? Yeah, so we had these seven days, and it was so full of this kind of, you know, divine attempt to pray and to meditate and to get close to those deep inner voices and the spiritual kind of exploration we were doing. And I think we got into the car and it was as if the devil in both of us said, where the f have you been? Because we just had the most disgusting, dirty, awful, dark conversation for three hours on the way to the airport. Because we we'd had this, it was, like, it was like the devil felt so left out of the last seven days that he just came and made wow. us say the most like nasty, I can't even remember, I've like blocked it out. We just, we went to the darkest place for about three wow. hours. The devil was there, he says, after this week of silence, gearing him up for the movie Silence. Not only that, but you will notice what the devil inspired. If you knew that there was an afterlife, would that be comforting or terrifying? How, how would I ever know? I don't know. Uh, but is that, but, but I, what, what I mean is... is a that, visitation from an angel, how about that? Well, sure, but I would always question it. Even after a visitation, I would always... I think it's healthy. You think about Thomas Merton, the great Trappist sure. monk and, and philosopher, really. Yeah. Um, his, his doubt was his greatest ally. I, he was always constantly doubting. And I think 
A life of faith is not a life of certainty. A life of faith is a life of, of doubt. Now, how is doubt faith? Are they not the opposite of each other? This is the kind of philosophy that causes a mind never to grasp on a truth, especially the truth of God's Word. That is what the Jesuit training does. You see, the question to Eve in the garden was, Hath God said? Spiritualism revolves around questioning God's Word. Spiritualism is a belief that the dead are still alive in an afterlife realm. Spiritualism is at war with the plainest statements such as the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Rather than live eternally in the spirit world as is believed by most religions today, including much of Christianity, many religions today have the belief that after death, the dead know a lot, but the dead know not anything. But think about this for a second, even if an angel came to Andrew Garfield and said, God's word is true, or even spoke according to this word, Andrew could never know for sure or even believe it because he has been trained to disbelieve, doubt, and question the word of God. From an article concerning the movie Silence entitled, Andrew Garfield, I Never Changed Who I Was, we read that, quote, Pope Francis joked that its star, Andrew Garfield, deserved to be ordained. It was high praise indeed for the actor, formerly known as the Amazing Spider-Man, this time channeling a Jesuit missionary in 17th century Japan. Channeling as in channeling spirits? I think that has already been established and proven. In fact, it's quite common in Hollywood. An actor, and actually I found out that Stanislavski, who invented modern acting, the method of modern acting that resulted in the American method and everything after that, was deeply inspired by St. Ignatius's spiritual exercises, so I felt kind of right at home. Method acting all comes from the ancient Jesuit theater, the method taught by Constantine Stanislavski. This is the method that all the A-list actors are using today. What kinds of things are they doing? And the same thing too, if you, if, in the mythology, if you could sell your soul to the devil, this could happen to you. I think that was the... Well, in, a, in an interesting way, uh, Ghost Rider is more real if you go for that sort of thing, in that he deals between the spiritual and the material. And if you have an open mind, anything is possible. In, the, in this movie, you uh, literally are fighting an inner demon. This, this hell beast that lives within you, and I'm kind of curious, it looks like it takes a lot of energy just to be able to bring that out, physically performing it. What was it like kind of working yourself up to that energy level to kind of have this fire burning inside of you? Uh, what I like to sometimes do is go outside the box and find something that's uh, more than natural, abstract, uh, larger than life, avant-garde in some way. Um, and you can do it in all sorts of art forms. You can do it in painting, you can do it in music. Why can't you do it in, in film acting? I, I, I read that you actually kind of painted your face and gun to the character of Ghost Rider, even though we don't see your face because you're a flaming skull on screen, right. but that you took efforts to try and inhabit that character physically. Is that part of like getting to that point, that energy point for you? Yeah, well what happens is when you make a decision to use the outside to work in, not only does it give you a kind of power, not unlike a child on Halloween, it also instills fear in your co-stars and the people around you, and you see that in their eyes, and then, then you don't have to act, because you suddenly get power from their fear. Sure, so are you eating cookies at the crafty table and like all the crew is scared of you because you're, you look like Ghost Rider all I'm, the time? I'm not eating cookies <laughs> at the crafty table, I go to the set, and I go to my trailer. Gotcha. Oh, so you're, you're kind of in the zone the whole time. Right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Some actors are known to take it to extremes, as I documented in the video I did on Jim Carrey. They would even stay in the character, believing not just that it would enhance their acting, but also even to the extreme that someone else would possess them. And that's the moment when Andy came back to make his movie. Hello. What happened after was out of my control. Andy felt it was necessary to stay in the character. He's exactly the way Andy was. It's totally surreal. Definitely, definitely an important moment in the process where I found myself uh, subjugating Jim Carrey for Andy Kaufman and Tony Clifton, and then, uh, and then at the end of it, looking for Jim Carrey again and having trouble finding him. And at a certain point, I, I realized, hey, wait a second, you know, if it's so easy to lose Jim Carrey, who the hell is Jim Carrey? And there was this Spielbergian kind of rack focus at that point where, like Roy Scheider on the beach, 
where I was kind of watching from another place. You said you've kind of disassociated yourself with, with Jim Carrey, but does it, you know, everyone, when we see your face, there's so many iconic roles and so many of our favorite movies from Eternal Sunshine, Dumb and Dumber and everything. Does well, that it, has nothing to do with Jim Carrey. That, that has nothing that, to do with Jim no, Carrey. Nothing at all to do with Jim Carrey. Matthew McConaughey, who co-starred with Jared Leto, said that when Jared Leto was method acting, it actually meant that Jared Leto was not on the set. In other words, there is someone else in Jared Leto's body. Hey, congratulations on winning the Golden Globe. I'm so excited to see you. That was great. Yeah. Man, nominated for an Oscar. This, yeah, I'm surprised. I didn't realize this was the first time. This is the very first time. Yes, it is. So how exciting is that? <laughs> now, Jared Leto, uh, yeah. your co-star, he was pretty, he got nominated also. He sure did, yeah. Now, let me ask you about that, because he... He does a wonderful job, and I, I was reading up on it. He, he's like a method actor guy. That means that what, they stay in character all the time? Basically, it means there's one less person on the set. Yeah. <laughs> if Jared's a character playing Ray on, Jared's not on set. Great. Yeah. There's only one, per one, one less person on the set. This is how real it becomes. Even Will Smith confirmed the same thing, that Leto was possessed or someone else was in Leto's body when he played the Joker in the movie The Suicide. Smith said regarding the Joker that he never once broke from his role, even after the cameras were off. I've never actually met Jared Leto. We worked together for six months and we've never exchanged a word outside of action and cut. I literally have not met him yet. So the first time I see him will be, hey Jared, what's up? He was all in on the Joker. Edward Norton, who starred in the movie Fight Club and also co-starred with Robert De Niro in the movie The Score, said this about De Niro and himself. Investigate, investigate, absorb, absorb, and then channel. I think he's a channeler, and I think I'm a channeler. And so it should not be a surprise that The Guardian is telling us that Andrew Garfield was channeling a Jesuit spirit. How is it that he was trained in the spiritual exercise of Loyola, going seven days without talking? doing all that fasting to lose 40 pounds and then suddenly the devil comes out of his mouth? That reminds me of a verse in the book of Revelation where we read, quote, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. They certainly are going to the kings of the earth, the kings of media, and using them in this spiritual battle of Armageddon. And so it should not be no surprise for this to be happening to Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield needs our prayers. And this is what is behind the acting of Andrew Garfield, who played the role of Desmond Doss in the movie Hacksaw Ridge. There was a, a particularly profound moment where I went to um, Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is where Desmond eventually retired and passed away. And I went onto his old property um, and went into his, his old wood, wood, woodshed and handled his tools and walked around the lake that he would walk around. And it was, <laughs> I spent a day there just kind of praying <laughs> and, and, and asking, like, just guide me through this. If you can hear me, tell, like, tell me, tell me what to do. Tell me how to move. Tell me how to speak. Tell me how to behave, and I'll do whatever you say. So that, that there was some, there, there was a, a, a strange, mysterious spirituality going on around the the making of this film. Andrew, what's the trick to bringing across the idea of the American South and the accent while you're shooting in Sydney? We were talking about mystery earlier and how the and the process of absorbing Desmond's essence and attempting to ingest him. So I, so I stay in the accent all the time to not confuse myself mostly. It was pretty, the depth of soul. Uh, there's also, um, I think he wasn't a talker, Desmond, and Andrew's able to convey very much without the need of dialogue as an actor. I mean, you can just see into his eyes and stuff. It's all going on. So, I mean, I, his talents, I think. I think very talented, just suited this character. And then I wasn't disappointed at all. He managed to inhabit Desmond or Desmond inhabited him. I'm not sure which. I think there was some both going on. Garfield believes that Desmond Doss is still alive. Garfield believes that by touching things on his property, you can have the spirit of Desmond inhabit you. These are the spiritualistic rituals that many go through in order to let a spirit inhabit them. But the Bible says that the dead know not anything and that trying to talk to the dead was classed as necromancy in the Bible. These are the spirits of devils, just as Satan came to Eve in the Garden of Eden saying, Thou shalt not surely die. The lie is being repeated to people who are ignorant 
concerning the truth about death. But look at what Garfield says about those who might know, understand, and even believe they have the truth. If you knew that there was an afterlife, would that be comforting or terrifying? How, how would I ever know? I don't know. Uh, but is that, but, but I, what, what I mean is... is A that, visitation from an angel, how about that? Well, sure, but I would always question it. See, a life of faith is a life of, of doubt. What I say, what I, what I mean when I say certainty scares me, certainty starts war. Certainty starts war on behalf of ideology. Certainty of the, I, I, I know and you don't. That's the scariest thing to me in, in what, what a human being is capable of doing. And it sounds like Brother Garfield, sadly, has fallen for that spirit that causes us to question, hath God said? Can we really be certain? Did Jesus really say that we must believe on him in order to have eternal life? Is the Bible really truth, or is there another way to live forever outside of believing God's Word? Can we be certain? I believe we can. Now this is what theatrics can do to your faith. The main actor in the script is none other than Satan himself, and most are amazed by the performance. Obviously this movie, Hacksaw Ridge, didn't inspire Andrew Garfield to have faith, so don't expect it to inspire you to have faith. However, the Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Instead of being inspired by Jesuit-inspired theatrics, which cause us to doubt and then to call it faith, faith is the opposite of doubting. Pick up the word, get a concordance, do some word searches, study and see for yourself the harmony that is contained in the word of God. God does not want us hating these men. He does want us to hate the sin and to put away this adulterous and worldly filth and to be clean. But these people need our prayers, just as Jesus said, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Bless them that curse you, and return evil with good. Most of these men are angry at the Creator, the God of the Bible, because the devil has misrepresented him.